Pivot tables are one of Excel's most powerful tools, but they come with a major limitation. They only work with a single table. That means that if your data is split across multiple tables, like this example over here, you can't actually analyze it together. But luckily, there is one feature called Power Pivot, which allows us to connect and analyze not just multiple tables, but also multiple Excel files, and even work with massive data sets that would crash a regular pivot table. So let's take a look at how it works. We'll first get started by installing Power Pivot, which you can see I have right up here, and you probably don't. So let me show you how to add it. Head over to File and towards the bottom, go to Options. Once you see this pop-up, you want to navigate to the Add-ins area down below here. So just click on that. And then on the bottom where it says Manage, we want to switch from Excel Add-ins to COM Add-ins. Press on Go there. And you want to take on Microsoft Power Pivot for Excel. So take on this one if you haven't already and press OK. When you do that, you should see Power Pivot up top in the ribbon. Awesome, so we're all set up. And first, let's take a look at how far we can take things with regular pivot tables so we can understand why we're better off using Power Pivot. So here's the file we're working with. You can see we have three different tabs, the sales, the employees, and the salaries. And you can download this file for free in the video description to follow along. First up, suppose we want to find out how much Olivia has generated in sales. So for that, we might think of doing a pivot table. So let's go on the sales tab and just go over to insert and click on pivot table. We're fine with a new worksheet, so I'm just going to press on OK. And in this area over here, we want to take the staff. So that would be the staff ID as the row. And we want to add their revenue as the values. That said, you'll notice we don't actually have the staff name. Right now, we're just going by their ID and we don't have the option for the name here in this table either. That's because it's just simply not available within these columns. In fact, it's only available at the employee level to see their name, and it would also be useful to see their age, maybe even their salary from the other tab. All of that information we can't really get in this pivot table because it can only analyze one table at a time. So let's try to fix this by using Power Pivot. For that, we'll go back over to the Sales tab. Make sure you have it selected here. And under Power Pivot, we're going to click on Add to Data Model. It might take a second to load, but you should see something like this, where on the bottom left, you can see we have the sales table, and it's opened up this whole new page called Power Pivot for Excel. So we've got one table, but we need to do the same thing with the other ones and bring them over here. So we just need to go back into Excel, select the employees one, and add to Data Model. Now you'll see on the bottom, we have the sales and the employees. Finally, we want to do the same thing with the salaries one. So add to data model. And now you'll notice we have all three tables in here. Awesome. So we now have all three different tables inside of Power Pivot, and we need to find a way to connect them together so we can work with the three of them. For that, we just want to go over to diagram view. And within this area, we can change their different relationships. So right now you can see that they're just three separate tables and they don't really have anything in common because they're not linked to each other. So I can just move this one around and you'll notice it's got no lines between them. So what we want to do is choose the different columns that they have in common, like the staff ID here and the sales staff ID here. So all I need to do is drag and drop that like that to create a relationship. You can tell it has a relationship with this line right here. And we can do the same thing with the salaries and the employees one. We'll use this level column and drag and drop that in here. If you've been paying close attention, you might have realized within the lines there's certain information, like this one over here and this star on the other side. That means we have a one-to-many relationship where for every staff ID under the employees, it's actually repeated several times in this sales table. In fact, if we take a look at it here in the employees table in Excel, you'll notice that let's say Olivia over here is only repeated once. Obviously, she's only an employee once. But in fact, she's done several sales and that makes sense because she's one of our salespeople. So you can see over here, she has several different transactions. Awesome. Once we've done all the linking in Power Pivot, we can see how we've leveled up our pivot tables. For that, we just need to go back to pivot table. Let's press on that. We're fine with it being in a new worksheet. So you can see we now have not only the sales like we did before, but also the salaries and the employees table too. So this time we can also add the exact same data as before. So it's just the staff ID on one side and the revenue on the other. 
nothing new here, but in fact, instead of just having that stuff ID, which isn't all that useful, we can now go ahead and find more data about these employees. So we can find out what their name is. You can see here we have all the names. And in fact, we can remove that stuff ID entirely and just see their name. We can also see stuff like their age and even sort all of this data. So let's sort by revenue here by right clicking. Under sort, I'm going to go largest to smallest. So it actually looks like Olivia is the one that's generating the most revenue. And with that in mind, it would be interesting to find out how much she's earning. Hopefully, if she's earning one of the most in revenue, she should be high up on the salary list too. So let's go ahead and take a look at that just by collapsing this one part. And to view things a bit better, so it's a bit easier to see, we can just press on this cog and go to the second option. So now you see the data is vertically laid out, so it's hopefully a bit easier. I can go to salaries and let's go for the base salary here. Let me move that a bit to the side. We don't really need the age, so I'm just going to drag and drop that out. And you can see that surprisingly, Olivia is among the lowest paid people. In fact, the highest paid is Ava over here, which she's not really earning that much in revenue. So that's a bit concerning. So you can see how Power Pivot can make our pivot tables so much more powerful. And if you thought this was impressive, it's just one of the many tricks that Power Pivot comes with, which I'm about to show you next. Before we dive in, if you want to learn Excel and other in-demand data skills the right way, I'd recommend you check out our data analyst program. It includes five comprehensive courses and over 300 lessons, all designed to help you become a world-class data analyst. The applications you learn include Excel, Power BI, SQL, Python, and the VBA and macros. So if you want to thrive in today's data-driven world, head over to the link in the description below and get started now with our data analyst program. All right, going back inside of Power Pivot to show you some of the other advanced features it has, we're just gonna head over to the data view. And over here, if we navigate to the salaries tab, so this one right here, you might have noticed that we have this add a column feature. So for example, here, I can just put an equal sign, you'll notice it up top here, and I can choose the whole revenue column minus the whole expenses column and hit enter. You notice that's gonna auto populate all the way down to the bottom. I can easily rename this into the profit and hit enter. Let's be honest here, there's nothing that special about this feature. After all, Excel tables do something similar. That said, I'm showing you that because when you add another column, there's another feature we can use, which is called the related function. Hit the tab key here. And now what we want to do is let's say take the name of the employees. We're just going to select that with the tab key there. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. Basically, what this is going to do is it's going to take the employees, the column name here, and it's going to match it based on the staff ID. So whenever there's the same 01 ID here, it's going to go over here and try to find it. So 01 and it's going to spit out the exact name of that person. So it's basically like a VLOOKUP or an XLOOKUP, except it's so much easier to do. Let's go ahead and rename this too into something like the name and hit enter. Once we've done that, we can just close out of Power Pivot. And you'll notice inside of our pivot table, if we go to the sales tab we were just working on, we now have these two new columns, which are the profit and the name that we added earlier. If you ever need to go back inside of Power Pivot, that's actually very easy to do. You just need to press on this manage button. And we're doing that because I want to show you one more thing. So far, we've added different columns, but the problem with that is that it's a lot of extra data. We now have an entirely new column on the profit and same thing with the names, which in fact is duplicated because we already have something similar here under the employees. So that's a lot more storage space that maybe is too much for us. What we can do instead is create something called a measure down below here. So we want to navigate past this gray line and all I need to do is just click on any of these and I'm going to press on this auto sum feature. Let's say I just go for the sum and that's basically the sum of the total profit as a measure. You can see the formula for it up top in here. I can also create my own formulas. So for example, down over here, I can do a distinct count. So it's going to be showing on this top part, distinct count, hit the tab key where I want to find out all of the distinct products that we sell. So right in here under the sales part, we're just looking for the products. So it's going to be this one. Hit the tab key there, close the parenthesis and hit enter. 
You might not see it initially, so we might need to stretch that one out just over here like that. And now we have the measure one. Let's actually change that name to something like unique products and hit enter. Now you can see we sell eight different products. We've done the sum here, but of course we have other functions too, like let's say the average. That's gonna show us the average profit per transaction. And just like we did before, we can also add these to the pivot table automatically simply by closing out of this. And now if we scroll to the bottom, you can see this FX. So that basically means that it's a measure. Let's try to find out maybe the average of profit by each person. So I'm just gonna drag these out like that. And now we've got the name of the person and the average profit they're making per transaction. Instead of the average, we can also go ahead and find out the sum of profit like that. And maybe unsurprisingly, Olivia is the highest, which kind of makes sense as she had the highest revenue too. So far, we've worked with multiple tables, but they're all in the same Excel file. What happens if we want to analyze data from separate Excel files? Let me show you how to do that right now. You can see here we have one Excel file open. I'm just going to press Ctrl N to open up a new Excel file. Head over to Power Pivot, and we're going to go over to the Manage button. Once you do that, it should open up Power Pivot, and this time we're going to go to From Other Sources. Within this list, if you scroll down to the bottom, you should find the Excel file option. Let's press on next here and we can choose the file path. In my case, I want this file right here. So I'm just going to open that and press on next. We can choose which particular table within the file we want. So for example, I can choose the sales table right here and I'm just going to press on finish. You probably start to get the idea, but basically once I've imported this one, we can import any other ones in the exact same way. So I'm just going to go from other sources, Excel file. I'm just doing this a bit faster now. I'm just going to choose this particular one down below, press on open, press on next, and I can choose which table I want. Let me say I just want this first one, press on finish there and close out of this one too. Give it a second and you'll see how this data loads up as well. So we focused on Excel files here, but you should know this also works with SQL databases, CSV files, and much more. One thing people often get confused about is what's the difference between Power Query and Power Pivot. I would see it as Power Query is the step one where you do a lot of the data cleaning and maybe formatting correctly. And then in step two, which would be Power Pivot is where you do the actual analysis and extracting some insights. If you're not sure what I'm talking about with Power Query, you should watch this video over here to learn more about how to use it, or you can take our Excel course over here. Hit the like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.